Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism. Yay. Hey. Welcome. Boys, how's everybody doing? All right. All right. It's an honor to be in Norwood for the first time. I guess last time we was in uh, Rockford. 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 So I guess I'm just doing a tour of all the white suburbs of Massachusetts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I don't want to waste any time, so I want to get right into the conversation. And we're here to talk about our children. So I want to talk about some things that I think all of you need to consider when we're dealing with making sure our children are getting what they are entitled to and what they deserve in the school system here in Massachusetts. I want to put the conversation in a little bit of context. So I want to go back to 1968, uh, Dr. King's assassination. Because to be honest, the new black America that we're living in now or have lived in over these past 55 years, it began with the assassination of Dr. King, who was the last leader we had to give us some sort of a serious struggle. Although we've had people claim to be leaders since then, they did more talking than acting. And that's where we've been for the past 55 years. So after Dr. King's murder, the US government says, we have to make sure black people can never rise again. And the first thing they did was they came into the inner cities and they eliminated all of the economic opportunities. They turned the black community into a job desert. They turned it into a skills desert and they turned it into a mass incarceration haven. Before 1970, you could get a decent job right in the middle of Boston, right in the middle of Philly, right in the middle of Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta, it didn't matter. The government said, if we wanna turn black people into a permanent underclass, we have to strip them of the ability to earn a living legally. Mm. And that's exactly what they did. They went into the high schools and took out all the building trade programs, carpentry, plumbing, HVAC, welding, roofing, auto mechanic. Up until 1970, you didn't have to go to college to live a decent life. You simply learned a skill in high school that afforded you the opportunity to pay your bills. So in the 70s, they took out all the skill paying programs in the high schools, and then they took the factories out the inner cities as well. And many of those very same factories that once employed our grandparents and great grandparents, they have been turned into prisons. Talk about 360 degrees of change. So after they did that, they finished waging war on the original Black Panther Party. The revolutionary era of the Black Panther Party ends in the early 70s. The Black Liberation Army picks up from then, but they've already taken care of Dr. King in 68. They assassinated Fred Hampton in 69. They assassinated George Jackson in 1971. And then by 1981, crack came. So between 71 and 81, they really focused on what can we do to turn black children into a permanent underclass. They needed a solution. Now in the mid 70s, as you know, right here in Boston, Massachusetts, you guys probably had one of the most aggressive anti-school desegregation plans where Irish parents burned buses, threw rocks, beat up black children, called them the N-word, so forth and so on. So the government said, we got to do something to get these white racist school districts to accept black children. And they came up with a mega bomb called special education. Hmm. And so special education was the weapon that the power structure would use to, number one, force white school districts to accept black children. Well, how did they do that? They did it because special education comes with a subsidy. It's subsidized education. So whenever you put a kid in special ed, the school gets paid. So the incentive in Boston public schools at that time, or Philadelphia public schools at that time, or New York City public schools at that time, we know you don't want these black children, but look at all the extra thousands of dollars you will get by letting them in. Hmm. And we're giving you the prerogative that after you let them into your predominantly white school, you can resegregate them behind closed doors by simply giving them an IEP and putting them in a class from the edge completely mentally retarded, the learning disabled, the emotionally disturbed, so forth and so on. So special education was the perfect weapon because it gave white schools extra money, it gave black parents the illusion of inclusion, hmm. and although your child was inside of a white school physically, they were still segregated once they got into the schoolhouse. Hmm. And it became a waiting room where you would send black children, boys in particular, where you would hang around, be miseducated, until you finally realized it was a waste of time and you either dropped out or you went to jail. So special education is the school to prison pipeline. And then we also gotta keep in mind that when we go back to 1964, the year before they killed Malcolm X, President Lyndon Baines Johnson declared a war on poverty, okay? And then the very month after they killed Malcolm X, he declared a war on crime, okay? And then Richard Nixon, 
declared a war on drugs in 1971, and Ronald Reagan declared a second war on drugs, 1982. Now, putting this in perspective, what am I trying to say? The war on drugs and the war on crime was the federal government's intentional transitioning away from fighting for black people to get equality and justice towards criminalizing black people so the government wouldn't have to do anything for them except lock them up. You see the difference there? Up until 1970, black people are the victims. After 1970, black people became the perpetrators. Hmm. And then, okay, after Ronald Reagan declared a second war on drugs in 1982, the American government would give its greatest support around 1985, 1986, with the rise of gangster rap, which is exactly what they needed at the time that they needed. So now you got young black inner city males making music where they are glorifying the very accusations that the government is using to turn black people into a criminal underclass. Just in time for 1994's Bill Clinton crime bill, which locked up more black people in American history than any president ever after the Civil War. So that's where we are now. Everything they've done, they've been doing, they've been up to it. Our problems were not created by us, but they are made worse by us because we do nothing about them. Mm -hmm. I want to be very clear about that. There's not a problem you got that you started. You didn't start mass incarceration. You didn't start the school miseducation. You didn't start gentrification. You didn't start economic devastation. Every problem in our community was created by the white power structure but is made worse because of black apathy, black indifference, black selfishness, and black self-hatred. So now let's get into the school to prison pipeline. Let's get into the specifics of the situation. Number one, big mistake that black parents are making. You're getting children evaluated too early. Biggest problem of 2023, too young to be tested. Three years old, looking for autism. Autism is real, but you can't prove it at three. How do you know the three-year-old doesn't have a selective mutism issue or social anxiety issue mm -hmm. or a hearing issue or a deaf issue or an emotional trauma issue? How do you know? You don't know at three. Y'all need to slow down and stop getting your children tested so early. Remember, special ed is a weapon. That means it hurts your child more than it can help your child. And as someone who's been testing children for 25 years, I'm a school psychologist. I do the evaluation, the IQ testing, the reading, the writing, the math, the emotional assessments, the adaptive behavior, the visual motor screenings. I do the testing. And for the life of me, I'm still trying to find out what you parents find to be so special about special education. Well, Johnny can't read, Dr. Umar. He's in the second grade. He's still struggling. You know why? Because he don't practice enough. Mm -hmm. You don't work with him enough. Oh. And he don't spend enough time on tasks. Oh. We've gotten so lazy that the minute our children struggle, you win an IEP, incarceration education preparation program. That's all <laughs> special that is. Getting them ready for jail. How can a child going slower ever catch up to the other children? Mm -hmm. Special ed is stepping on the gas and slowing the instruction all the way down, all the way down to a point where the IEP team feels is commensurate for your child. They never catch up. They're not supposed to catch up because special ed is designed to feed the prisons. It's not designed to help your child, but it feeds off the laziness and the apathy of black parents who think putting a label on your child is a solution. The label is not a solution. When y'all child get a label, some of y'all act like y'all hit the lottery. Okay? Stop it. He's not reading disabled. He's lazy disabled. And so are you. What are y'all doing right now? Shopping. Buying video games for kids who can't read on grade level. You part of the school to prison pipeline. You out buying tablets and cell phones for kids who can't count on their grade level. You part of the school to prison pipeline. If he can't read before the video game system, you could be for certain he won't be reading after he starts playing with it. I want y'all to look at your Christmas gifts because I want you to know you're investing in your son's future mass incarceration. You're buying things that takes him away from academics. And you know what's sad? Very few books are under the Christmas tree. Hmm. Very few books, 
very few ink pens, pencils, writing tablets. The stuff that our children need to get ahead, we don't invest in that. And then we talk about how bad the schools are. They are bad, but our houses aren't much better. Where's the thesaurus? Do you have one? That should have been the first thing for Christmas. Where's the dictionary with at least a thousand pages in it? Do you have one? That should have been the second thing for Christmas. Where's the encyclopedia? Do you have one? That should have been the third one for Christmas. Because you know if your boys can't read by the time they finish the fourth grade, yeah. <laughs> there's a very strong likelihood they'll be spending some of their adulthood in prison. Mm. And that is so predictive that governments all across the 50 states have been using reading skill levels of black boys in elementary school to predict how many prisons and prison beds they'll need over the next decade. Mm, my God. Right. See, we were brought to America to be the opportunity financially for white folks. And you know what's sad? We are still the opportunity for white folks financially. <laughs> Once they hustled you on an auction block, now they hustle you on a special ed auction block, the NBA auction block, the NFL auction block, the gangster rap auction block. And what do all of our boys want to be? Athletes and entertainers. They don't want to own nothing. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I was at the Delaware Black Farmers Conference at HBCU Delaware State University. You know what they said? They said that when you talk to young people about becoming farmers, almost none of them are interested in it. And I had to stand back and think about it because I've been speaking at career days for almost 30 years. And I don't ever recall hearing a black child say, what are you going to be when you grow up? A farmer. Less than 1% of all farmers in America are black, and many of them are aging. The black farmers are an aging population. And you know what one of the biggest issues are? They can't find young people who want to learn the skill of the trade. Hmm. Which means black people are living in food deserts, and even if you're not living in a food desert, you're living in a town or an area where your food is provided by somebody who nine times out of 10 hates your guts. I just read an article the other day that Bill Gates' food, because you know Bill Gates is now the number one owner of agrable land in the United States. Why does a tech giant get involved in agriculture? Because Bill Gates wants to poison the food and sell it to you as part of their depopulation control agenda. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the depopulation control agenda, the father of the depopulation control agenda, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, just died yesterday. Thank God. <laughs> This was the man who This was the man who authored the NSSM 200, the National Security Study Memorandum 200 in December of 1974, saying the United States government needs to take intentional steps to reduce the world's population. From that came your AIDS. From that came your mass incarceration. From that came your LGBTQRSTUXYV. It all came from that. Anything we can do to cut the numbers of black people down, your COVID and everything else they're working on came out of that original 1974 document. He just died yesterday at the age of 100 years old. And you know what's interesting? A lot of these population control junkies and white supremacists, they fled Germany during the time of you know who. Mm -hmm. They fled persecution only to come to America and become the leading persecutors of black people. How you flee persecution in Germany and come to America and do all you can to eliminate Africans in the world, but you can't talk about that because you'll be considered anti this mm -hmm. and anti that. Mm. The untouchables. <laughs> okay? Now, getting back to the school system. Y'all can leave the lights on. This is not a party. Turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> so, number one, stop getting the children evaluated too young. The only thing that I think is acceptable at a young age is the speech and language evaluation. If you think the child needs speech and language, go ahead and get a speech and language eval. That is a form of special ed, but unlike the other disabilities, it does not land your child in a classroom. If your child has a speech and language impairment, they simply get speech and language therapy from the therapist. It's a pull-out service. So I don't have no issues with speech and language, okay? But I do want you to know that a lot of the charter schools in your city are sabotaging, or should I say exploiting black learners in the name of speech by getting everybody evaluated for speech who don't even have a speech problem so they can get the extra money. Hmm. Remember, every school in Massachusetts is looking for a way to increase their special ed numbers so they can increase their budget. It is your job as the parent to say, my son don't need no speech therapist. He's just fine. Well, we think, I don't care what you think. 
He don't need it, and he's not going to get it. You have to start being more aggressive, and you have to start being more assertive. The average parent in our community is not a good advocate for their child. Y'all let these white teachers dictate what's going to happen to your child. Y'all let them dictate when they're going to get evaluated. Y'all let them dictate when they're going to get special educated. And y'all let them dictate when they're going to get exonerated from special ed, if that ever happens. Y'all have to stop doing that. Okay? You have to stop doing that. Learning disability, show it to me. The reading disability is the number one reason for black children being in special ed. Reading disability. Can anybody prove it? You can't prove a reading disability. Where is it? Is it an x-ray, CAT scan, MRI, blood test, urine sample? How do you prove that your child got a reading disability? Does it exist in the head? Where is it at? Anybody ever show you a picture of where the reading disability at? It don't exist. It's a philosophical concept. It's a working hypothesis. It's a professional theory. You go to one psychologist, it's a reading disability. Next psychologist is ADHD. Next psychologist, Dr. Umar, the diagnosis is an SLD. My diagnosis is going to be ABT, and ABT stands for he ain't never been taught. Hey. Hey. Because most of our children being tested for special ed simply have never been taught how to read because they've done away with phonics and they went to whole language. And as a result of that, the emphasis on mastering letter sound association is no longer there. Mm. It's no longer there. And Lord knows there ain't no books in your house, so there's no reading practice going on in there at all. And we can forget <laughs> about comprehension if they can barely read. Mm. And that's another weakness of our children. The ones who can read well, they struggle with reading comprehension. Mm. Y'all have to practice comprehension at home because with most teachers, once your child can read and once they're fluent, they don't even pay attention to the hey, comprehension. Hey. Mm. That's something you have to learn how to do at home. That's why the test scores are so low on the state assessments because our children know how to decode words, but they can't derive meaning mm -hmm. from the passage. Mm -hmm. We have to work on that at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stay away from that learning disability. It is not your friend. You say he's going to get extra help. Don't nobody in special ed get no damn extra help. That's a lie. The whole concept of individual education is a lie. Some of the special ed classrooms have as many children as the regular classrooms. And I've evaluated children who in a special ed class have higher scores than the kids in a regular class. How do you end up in special ed when you're smarter and performing higher than the children in the regular ed class. You know how that happens? You got put in special ed for behavior, not learning. Mm -hmm. Special education is a trash can where you throw the black boys that nobody cares to educate. Mm -hmm. That's what they do, right? Oh, we think he got a reading problem. Nothing's wrong with your son, but the teacher knows this is the only way I can get him out of my class. Mm -hmm. I have to make up a disability, and I know the mother is going to believe anything that I say because black people think that when white people walk into the school building in the morning, they leave their racial bias on the front steps. Mm -hmm. So anything they tell you about your child, you automatically assume it's correct. And it's funny because when I consult with black parents, I always ask them one question. Why did you give them permission to evaluate your child? And do you know the answer I normally get? Because they asked me. <laughs> That's the answer y'all give me. I don't care if it's California. I don't care if it's Texas. I don't care if it's the U.S. Virgin Islands. I don't care if it's your brothers and sisters over in Paris or your brothers and sisters over in London because they have their own form of special ed as well. And when I ask them, why did you give consent for your child to be evaluated, they say, because the teacher asked me to. So if the teacher asked you to jump off the bridge, would you do that also? <laughs> Stop testing children who you know have no other problem except laziness. Stop doing it. And if you're raising academically lazy children, you might as well just drop them off at the prison now because that's where they'll be in about 10 years. Mm. The responsibility is yours. There's three types of black parents in the world. Three types. You have aggressive parents, you have passive parents, and you have balanced parents. What is an aggressive parent? This is a strict parent. They dictate their child's life. They're very firm, high expectations, very little emotional support though. So their children grow up to be doctors and lawyers and business owners and millionaires because they was raised with the discipline they needed in order to survive. But they also become some of the biggest secret alcoholics and marijuana addicts and cigarette smokers, right? Because they were valued in their house for what they could achieve. They were never valued in their home for who they were. Mm. This is the high achieving addict. And we all know some, right? 
-hmm. And then on the other side, you got your passive parents. These are the parents who let the kids do whatever they want, mm -hmm. right? I love my son. He didn't have his daddy, so I'm going to spoil him. And I know I'm talking to some mothers in here who are downright destroying your damn sons by loving him to death with no discipline in the house. Mm -hmm. His daddy wasn't there, so I'm going to buy him everything he wants. I know he fell in class, but he had a hard life. Go ahead and keep on spoiling that little lazy-ass black boy you're raising. You'll be in jail in 20 years, and it's going to be all your fault. You better understand that there's something called tough love. Tough love. We don't punish our kids because we hate them. We punish our children because we know how tough it is out in that world. Your house is a training ground for your sons and daughters to succeed in this racially competitive Massachusetts society. Facts. Facts. How are you going to spoil a child who got to work twice as hard to get half as much? Okay. <laughs> How are you spoiling a child who got to work twice, work twice as hard to get half as much? And that's exactly what we're doing. And then they come into the school and expect the teachers to do the work for them. They don't want to apply themselves or anything. We have to blame ourselves. And black men have to take a lot of this responsibility because for the mothers who are raising sons on their own without the benefit of a father being present, those of us who are present in the community, we tend to look the other way and not lend out a helping hand. The boys are the responsibility of the men, period. That's African culture. Mm. Whether that's your biological son or not, the boys in the hood are the responsibility of the men. And one of the most scathing examples of black male demasculinization is when we walk by black mothers struggling with black boys and refuse to help them unless we can get a little cookie for the nookie, a quid pro quo. We have to start working with these black boys because it's our job to do it. Because nobody's going to save the black community but black people. I don't know why we keep sitting around waiting for white folks to save the black community. Y'all sitting around waiting for an Asian mayor back in Boston to save the black community. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody comes to America to help black folks. Let me say it one more time. Nobody comes to America to help black folks. Let me say it one more time. Nobody has ever come to America to help black folks. If you know a group of people that have ever come to this country in its 270 something year history, please name the group that came to America to struggle with black folks. They might use you for a minute. They might act like they're your friend for a minute until they get what they want and then they forget about you. Mm. If you don't believe me, go study the history of black, white, Jewish relations. They were once our friends until they got what they needed. Now they don't even know you no more. Mm. The only friends we got is each other, and the only friends we need is one another. The problem is we don't want to unite because we got a whole bunch of schisms and isms. If we ain't fighting over light skin, dark skin, if we ain't fighting over Muhammad, Jesus, if we ain't fighting over uh, uh, ghetto and bougie, if we ain't fighting over nappy hair and straight hair, if we ain't fighting over black weave or blind perm, it's always something keeping Negroes at each other's throats. Petty differences will destroy us if we don't get over it. Mm. I was in Chicago about two weeks ago. Got a first-hand account of the migrant crisis. They're literally purging black Chicago with migrants. Literally. Taking black people's tax dollars and funding people who come from another country. And I'm not against the migrants. They didn't do nothing to me. But the power structure is using them to replace us. And because we're so disorganized, it's easy for them to do it. Mm. And the reason they want to break up black Chicago is Chicago is the only predominantly black U.S. congressional district in the country. Mm. That's why Barack Obama had to become a senator, U.S. senator through Chicago, Carrie, Carol Mosley Braun, because it's a black senatorial district. They want to bust that up and turn it into a migrant district. <laughs> because the thinking is if we could take Chicago back and if we could take New York City back from the blacks, we can easily destroy Boston blacks. We can easily destroy Philadelphia blacks. We can easily take Virginia blacks. So you better be paying attention to what's happening in New York and Chicago because those are our two strongest and our most conscious black political economic power bases. Once they disintegrate them, the rest of us are done. Mm. Now you got a presidential election coming up next November. This is probably one of the most irrelevant elections of all time for black folks <laughs> because neither <laughs> candidate has anything on the table for you. And they don't have to put anything on the table for you because we're not organized enough to force a conversation on the things that matter to us. The reason LGBTQ get what they want because they are organized and they use their money and their votes in a systemic way. The reason European Jews and other groups get what they want because they are organized and they harmonize their political activity. They use their money and their votes in a consistent way. Black people still married to the Democratic Party plantation. Hmm. You don't vote as black people, you vote as Democrats. You don't vote as black people, you vote as Republicans. Neither one of them got to take you seriously. 
Neither one of them got to take you seriously. Black folks will never be taken seriously in an election until we chain our votes together and operate as a community. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back to the children, I need you to understand that whenever you get your child evaluated by a school district in America, if you do not agree with the conclusion of the evaluation, you have a right to a second opinion. Mm -hmm. It's called Independent Educational Evaluation, IEE. Remember that, Independent Educational Evaluation. You get a report that says your child is retarded, intellectually disabled is what it's called now. You don't agree with that report. You simply write a letter to the principal, Dear Dr. Silverhauser, my son is a third grader and we hate black people public school in Norwood, Massachusetts. He was recently evaluated and determined to be intellectually disabled. I do not believe my son is intellectually disabled. I'm requesting my federal right to an independent educational evaluation. Once you approve my request, I will provide you with the name of the certified school psychologist I've chosen to evaluate my child, and the school district pays the bill. Mm. You do not pay for the independent educational evaluation. Hey. So I should never hear a parent in Massachusetts say that they said my child was autistic and I didn't agree with it, but I didn't know what to do. They said my child was emotionally disturbed and I didn't agree with it, but I didn't know what to do. They said my daughter had a hearing impairment, or my grandson uh, was... Uh, intellectually disabled or math disabled and I didn't know what to do. You always have a right to a second opinion. All you have to do is write a letter to the principal and exercise that right. Another point I want to bring up to y'all. If your child is ever evaluated clinically or educationally, I don't care if it's the clinical psychologist, I don't care if it's the school psychologist. If your child is ever evaluated and you're given a psychological evaluation report and you don't see test scores in your report, give it back. Never accept an evaluation report that doesn't list the tests they administered and the scores. You know why? Because if you were to call Dr. Umar up and say, Dr. Umar, I know you don't know my son, but I want you to take a look at this evaluation. Please give me uh, your assessment of how well this evaluation was completed and whether or not you agree with the reasoning upon which they drew the conclusion that my child had ADHD or autism or reading disability. I can't do that if there's no scores. Do y'all understand? Mm. I, I'm going to go right to the score page and I'm going to look at the IQ scores and see if I agree that this score pattern constitutes a child who's into intellectually disabled. I'm going to go right to the reading scores and see if these reading scores constitute a child who might have a reading disability. Without the scores, I can't help you. And without the scores, you don't even know if they really tested your child at all. Hmm. Did y'all hear what I just said? I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Without the scores in the evaluation, how do you know your child was tested at all? Mm. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, Dr. Umar, you're telling me that they will give me a report from another child where they just change the name and put my child's information on it and pass it to me, hell yeah, I've seen it done. I've seen it done. You ever read a report and it got another child name all in your child's report and you're like, why well, I keep on seeing Tommy in here? My son's name is Raheem. Because that's Tommy's eval. Yeah. And they forgot to search and replace all of the names where Tommy name showed up in the eval. You never take a report that don't have scores. And then if they say something like, well, we didn't put the scores in there because we didn't want to confuse you. You just tell them I'm not confused. I'm no psychologist. I might want somebody to look at this report. If I ain't got no scores in here, I have no proof that you actually tested my child. So please never accept the eval without no scores. Okay, number three, I'm giving you all the tricks of the trade. Number three, if you get an evaluation and your child was administered a brief, if you see the word brief next to any test, brief intelligence test, brief reading assessment, brief math assessment, brief emo, if you see the word brief, give the report back and say, I'm not accepting a brief assessment for my child. This is supposed to be a comprehensive evaluation. Hey. So I want the full IQ test okay. use, not brief. I want the full academic test use, not brief. And let me give you the difference between a full and a brief. A brief IQ test might take about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. A full IQ test could take an hour to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. You see the big difference there? Mm -hmm. And you know what I've come across? I've seen black children classified as intellectually disabled off of a 15 minute brief IQ test. That's crazy. <laughs> You know what that means? That means the psychologist made a permanent, lifelong determination mm -hmm. see, about that child's intellectual potential. And he did it using an IQ test that he knows is not reliable enough upon which to base a decision. Exactly. 
because they know the parents don't know. Let me give you another tip. If you get a report that's 30 pages or more, I can almost guarantee you that a human being did not write that report. Mm. It was written by a computer program. <laughs> In psychology, we have computer software. It's psychological evaluation software. You know what that means? I'll put your child's reading scores in the program. I'll put the math scores in the program. I'll put the IQ scores in the program, right? And I hit return. And what happens? The computer will type up an evaluation for your child. Now, what's wrong with that, Dr. Umar? If I'm going to get a 30-page report with graphs on it and all types of fancy stuff, what's wrong with that? Let me tell you what's wrong with that. Did the computer interview the mother? No. Did the computer know that that child was a victim of sex abuse? No. Did the computer know that that child been to five or six or seven different schools? No. Did the computer know that that child was a victim of bullying? Did the computer know that that girl lost her grandmother who raised her last year and her depression is the reason why she's not achieving and not some artificial learning disability? Do you understand me? Does the computer know that that child goes to one of the lowest performing schools in Boston or Norwood or Brockton? Did the computer know that the classroom teacher is lazy and barely leaves her desk to teach the children anything? Did the computer know that? No, the computer didn't. The computer is making a determination exclusively based off what? Input. The scores I gave it, the input. Mm -hmm. The input. So y'all better be real careful because you know we think more, we think more is better. So some of y'all get a 30 page report and say, oh yeah, Dr. Umar, they got recommendations. Give me that report. I look at the report. This is a computer generated report. Hmm. Yeah, there's, us, there's psychologists out there who don't even write reports. They do the testing, plug it into the computer and hit return. <laughs> I've never used a computer-generated report in my life. You know why? Because what the mother tells me, what the father tells me, what the teacher tells me, what the child tells me is going to be far more influential on my determination of disability than any score that I get. The score means nothing without your interpretation. Mm. Your child missed a whole year of school. First of all, let's, let's understand something. Post-COVID... You shouldn't be looking for no special ed anyway because your children have missed about a year to two years anyway being at home on the COVID quarantine. So how your child coming back first, second year of full-time school after being home for a year or two on COVID quarantine and you talking about a learning disability. <laughs> Listen, most black kids in America are about two grades behind as a result of the COVID quarantine. So if the teacher calls you up and say your son is in the fifth grade reading on the third, we think he need to be tested, he might need an IEP, time out. If he's two years behind, couldn't that be explained by the two years he was sitting at home on the laptop and your teacher told him absolutely nothing mm -hmm. when the kids was only getting one or two hours of instruction a day and that was barely spent learning anything? Mm -hmm. I gotta stop letting people hustle y'all. Because right now we're dealing with one of the biggest explosions in special ed referrals for black children around the country because all these schools that, and it's not all their fault, but all these schools that miseducated during the COVID quarantine years, they're now looking at all the money they can make off of all these black kids if they put them in special ed. <laughs> and y'all signing y'all name off. So and then y'all call me up and say, Dr. Umar, they put my child in the learning support. They put my child in autistic support. They put my child in emotional support. They put my child in life skills support. But you leaving out your role in the academic lynching of your child. Mm. Because before we can special educate your child, you have to sign your name four times. You have to sign permission for me to evaluate. You have to sign agreement with my evaluation. You have to sign the IEP, and you have to sign the special education service agreement. Four signatures. If any of your children have an IEP in this room, you signed your name four times before they put your son on the auction block of special ed. Mm. So make sure you take your responsibility in the role that you play. Okay, next point, next point. Most inner city schools, if your child goes to an economically disadvantaged school or your child goes to school in the economically disadvantaged community, that school nine times out of 10 get tied to one money. You could go on the school district's website and you can see which schools get tied to one money. The tied to one money comes from the Linda Baines Johnson's Elementary and Secondary Schools Act of 1965. Linda Baines Johnson said, if we want to battle poverty, we got to make sure black kids can read and count. So they start sending millions of dollars into the schools. So if your child goes to a school that gets Title I funding from the federal government, why aren't you making them use that money? Why aren't you making them use that money to provide your sons and daughters with tutoring? Why are you letting them send them straight to special ed? Hmm. Y'all see that? If my child is in a Title I school, the first question I'm asking, of the principal 
is where are the tutors at? Y'all, wh- what are you doing with the Title I money? You're trying to hustle my child for special ed money, but you already are getting money to work on the reading and math skills of the black children in this school. Y'all see how that works? So you got to call them to task. And what you don't want to do is let them use the same teacher <laughs> that miseducated your child from 8 to 3 oh, o'clock come on now. <laughs> and pay them to hang around from 3 to 5 <laughs> so they can get extra money in a Christmas shopping check. Are y'all following me? Yes. Because see, this is the time of year that the teachers want to stay behind and get extra time so they can buy them Christmas gifts. Yeah. And you's a fool if you let the same teacher you can't teach your child from 8 to 3 be the tutor. <laughs> if she can't teach them 30 hours a week how to read, what makes you think she's going to do it 10 hours a week after school? Mm. The mm. tutor should never be the teacher making the accusation that your child needs special help. Hey. In fact, if I were you, I would dig in my pocket. You got the money because you get your nails done. You got the money, <laughs> you get your hair done. You got your money, you got the BBLs and all that. <laughs> Fellas, you got the money, you got the Jordans and all that. All you got to do is sacrifice some Jordan money and some nail money and pay for your child to get a tutor. Mm. Tutoring is the kryptonite of special education. I don't know why y'all looking for IEPs when half of our children's academic problems can be solved with tutoring. And guess what? A high school student might be good enough in most cases. Mm. A high school student. Your child can't read in the fifth grade? Go find you an 11th or 12th grader. Hey. Pay them $20. Let's go. $20 twice a week for an hour. $40 a week. You can for afford real. that. For real. That's all it takes. You want an IEP with all this paperwork and a psyche valve. And you got these white folks making you think they're going to do something so special for your child. <laughs> you need to ask them a question. How many children you put in special ed graduated on time? Ask them! They don't give you that part. But I know why a lot of y'all end up falling victim because they talk about special ed in such a grandiose manner. Extra yeah. time, extra test time, one-on-one. He'll never be left down again. We got all kind of supports in the smaller class. And, and, and y'all be like, my God, special ed must be the truth. Oh, it's the truth, all right. It's a, it's a hustle. <laughs> it's the truth, all right. You keep on messing with special ed if you want. And if your child can't read when they go home for them two weeks on Christmas break, they need to have a tutor for them two weeks while they're on Christmas break. Ain't no hanging around, watching football games, and playing with Christmas toys. You can't read, and we're going to get you some help so that you can read. If you can't get a high school student, get you a retired teacher. There's retired teachers everywhere. Mm. This retired, find you, go to the, the closest church. They ain't doing nothing there anyway. Go to the closest <laughs> church and ask them where your teacher's at. I need a teacher, your retired teacher, who can work with my son or daughter. Two hours a week, three hours a week. It's a shame. Most of our kids aren't special ed because you're too lazy to spend your money to help them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. And let's just be honest. Isn't that really the narrative of black America anyway? Mm. We don't want to spend our money to do anything for ourselves. Oh, no. Not as a group. As an individual? Oh, hell yeah. But together, you ain't thinking about it. When the last time y'all had a meeting to build an institution for the community without white money or government money? Hmm. Well, where do we have the meetings at? I'm all over YouTube, all these conversations we having about everything except the things that matter. When we gonna have a conversation about building a black hospital in Boston, building a black school in Boston, building a black supermarket in Boston, building a black bank in Boston, when we gonna have them conversations? $30 billion on hair a year? $30 billion on hair? And the hair still don't look right. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so one girl, she was like a hundred pounds, skinny little thing, with like five hundred pounds of hair. I thought the hair was a damn Superman cape. <laughs> now let's talk about behavior. If your child has an IEP, which means they're a special ed child, which means they have a disability, those three things go together, y'all. Okay. If you have an IEP, you are a special ed child. That means you have a psychological evaluation somewhere that qualified you with a disability. Some of y'all think your child is not in special ed because they're not in a special ed class, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That means their placement is the regular class, but they still have an IEP. And that's something else I need y'all parents to understand. Special ed placement can be the regular classroom. Did you know that your child doesn't have to leave the regular class to get their extra help? 
So they say, Dr. Uma, how does that work? If my child has a reading disability and the special ed placement is the class, how does it get any help? You know what's supposed to happen? The special ed teacher, the learning support teacher, is supposed to come into the classroom, sit next to the child, mm -hmm. and work with them as you're teaching the whole class. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all see how that works? Mm -hmm. So the next time they want to special educate your child, just let them know before you even do any testing. Say, listen, I'm telling you now. If I let y'all test my son, and y'all say he got a learning disability, the only placement I'm going to consent to is the class he's already in. I want the teacher to come in and work with my son during that mm -hmm. skill period, but he's not leaving the class. Mm -hmm. You know what you just did? You just defeated the whole reason why the teacher want him tested in the first place. Mm -hmm. She want him tested to do what? To get get him out! Mm -hmm. Special ed is the trash can. You throw black boys, you ain't interested in teaching until they old enough to drop out and get locked up. So you let them know up front he's not leaving the classroom. That's what they do in white schools. In white schools, a lot of them white students, they stay right in the regular class, and that special ed teacher will come in there for the 45 minutes of reading instruction, reading instruction, or that 45 minutes of math instruction, or that 45 minutes of comprehension, or that 45 minutes of language or writing. That's what they do. But in the ghetto, you go to a place. You go to a place. A classroom of 12 to 15 black boys, kid, none of them read on grade level, stressed out, the teacher stressed out. The only person who needs support in there is the damn teacher. Mm -hmm. But let me give y'all this. If your child has an IEP, they can only be suspended 10 total days out the entire 180 day school year. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say this again. You better remember this. Mm -hmm. If your child has an IEP, which means they're a special ed student, which means they have a disability. They can only be suspended a total of 10, cumulative, 10 days throughout the year. That means if your child got suspended two days in September, they got eight days left. Your child got suspended two days in November, they got six days left. Your child got suspended two days in January, they got four days left. Your child got suspended two days in February, they got two days left. Your child got suspended two days in March, they 10 days is up. And so what do they do kicking now? Kicking them out of the classroom, doctor. Say that again. Kicking them out of the classroom is considered a in-house suspension. In-school suspension counts yeah. as a day, yes. Mm -hmm. So if your child is suspended in school, that still counts as a day of suspension. Y'all follow me? Mm. So you say, well, he's never been out of school. He's only had in-school suspension. Mm. In-school suspension counts to the 10 days total. Now, let me clarify. After 10 days, they can suspend more, but... The IEP team has to come together, conduct a manifestation determination of disability, and then the IEP team agrees, which includes you, because you're a parent, so you're a part of the team, and y'all can collectively agree that this child can be removed for more than 10 days. But let me tell you a little secret. If the school suspended your child 10 days, that is proof that they cannot meet their needs. Mm -hmm. Are y'all following me? Mm -hmm. That is proof they cannot meet their needs. So if the school suspended my child 10 days and they looking for me to approve a few more, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call an IEP meeting and I'm gonna make it clear to the IEP team that y'all cannot meet my son's needs. Therefore, as the federal government says, any school that cannot properly meet the needs of an hey. IEP student must pay for them to attend private school. Did y'all hear what I told you? That is the law. That is the law. If you can prove that your child's public or charter school cannot implement the IEP in that school, they must pay for a private school to do it for them. I know because I help parents get it done all the time, all over the country, everything. Door to door, transportation, instruction, speech therapy, OT, PT, post-traumatic slavery therapy, everything. <laughs> Some of y'all niggas need that real bad. <laughs> Talking about you a Boston Celtic. Celtics can't stand black people. But listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen. So, that means you should keep count of your child's suspension days. Because let me tell you what the principals do in the hood. And you're talking to a former principal. You know what they do? They will call you up. When they getting close to the 10 days, they say, damn. It's only November. We didn't already hit him with seven. We only got three for the rest of the year. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to call mom up. Hey, Miss Shaquita, Raekwon having a bad day. 
<laughs> so this is what we're going to do, because we don't want your son looking like no criminal on the paperwork. Why don't you just come and sign him out? If you come and sign Raekwon out, nobody knows. It's no suspension. It's just an early dismissal. So guess what? You get in the habit of coming up there two, three times a day to give Raekwon early dismissal. So then one day you hear about Dr. Umar, you hear me talking and say they can't suspend for more than 10 days. You're like, wait a minute, I know Ray Kwan got hit for more than 10. You go back to the school office, you say, I need a printout of my child's suspensions. And they come out with five. And you know it's been at least 25. <laughs> you know what happened to the other 20? Those was all the early dismissals, dismissals that you did. Hmm. See, you think the school was helping you by letting you sign Ray Kwan out. They were protecting themselves because they know they only get 10 days. So in the future, if your child got an IEP, say there won't be no early dismissal. Go ahead and suspend them. Tell them, go ahead and suspend them, and I want the suspension slip, and you're going to keep a track of the suspension slips. Mm. You better, because the principals do not record all suspensions. I'm telling you what I know. Mm. I'm telling you what I know. I work with principals every day. They do not record all the suspensions to protect themselves. If they go over 10, you better be keeping your own documentation. Remember, mm. having a lazy parent is like having no parent at all. Mm. If you're a lazy parent, your child will suffer. Every school has a black list. Do you know what a black list is? This is a list of black parents that the schools know they better not F with. Mm. You feel me? If you're not on that list, you're not on your job. If they don't triple when you walk in, <laughs> you should be one of the parents the minute they see you they tear up the suspension notice and everything they don't want no smoke with her you need to be one of the parents now here's the other thing I need y'all to know here's the other thing I need y'all to know here's the other thing let's talk about manifestation determination for a minute I need y'all to get this pay attention because this is where a lot of y'all kids get expelled from school where you could have saved them. Mm. So remember, a child with a disability, it don't matter if they autism, it don't matter if they speech and language, it don't matter if they hearing impairment, it don't matter if they are deaf, blind, orthopedically impaired, emotionally disturbed, intellectually disabled, other health impairment. There's 13 federal special ed categories, right? It don't matter which one they are. If that child exhibits behavior problems, they're supposed to have a behavior plan attached to the IEP. I'm gonna say, wait a minute, did they have a functional behavioral assessment and a positive behavior plan? You're gonna say, Doc, I never even heard of that. The school in violation. So when they sit down to do the manifestation determination to suspend your child for 11 days or more, remember, they got 10 that they can use whenever they want. You feel me? 10 days as the principal, I can use my 10 days. I don't need nobody's permission to suspend your child. 10 total, you got me? Now I want to suspend him an 11th day, okay? He called the white teacher a snow bunny. That's a day. <laughs> <laughs> he called her a crusty old dried up bunny. So he got a day. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so it's the 11th day, right? The 11th day. You know what that means? The IEP team has to conduct a manifestation determination. If you got special ed kids and they bad, you better be listening. Okay, you got badass kids, listen. <laughs> they call you in, you part of the IEP team, right? We gotta conduct a manifestation determination to see if we can legally remove your child from the school for an 11th day or more. You with me so far? Mm. Is everybody with me so far? The principal get 10 days no matter what, right? He used up his 10. He want Raekwon going for 11th day for talking about the old bunny, right? <laughs> IEP team. Now, who's on the IEP team? There's four people required and anybody optional. The regular ed teacher, special ed teacher, the local education agency representative. That means principal or designee, right? So let's say I'm the principal of your child's school. I'm too busy to be in that IEP meeting. Since the Keisha is my special ed coordinator, my dean of students, my vice principal, my grade leader, I'm appointing her to be the chair in my absence at your child's IEP, right? So you got the regular ed teacher, special ed teacher, the LEA, which is the principal or designee, Keisha gonna sit, and the parent. You are mandatory. But let me tell y'all a secret. Y'all ready for this? Even though everything in special ed is decided on a vote, if you don't sign the paperwork, 
Nothing can move forward. Mm. I need y'all to understand this. Because let me tell you what they do. Hey, we hate black kids, Boston. You know what they'll say? You've been outvoted, Mr. Shaquita. Everybody here believes that Raekwon needs to be in a full-time special ed class for emotional dis dis disturbance, right? Mm -hmm. And then you say, damn, I was outvoted. You're never outvoted because you're the parent. And if you don't sign off, they can't do nothing. I need y'all to understand that. The power is in your hands. Mm -hmm. The power is never with the team. Ever. Trust me. The power is not with the team. It's with you. But if you let them bully you and intimidate you mm -hmm. and force you to sign your signature, well, that's just some scared plantation stuff. You got to work on your own self. Mm. Understand? If you don't sign, the show don't go on. So, you just came to the manifestation determination meeting. Mm. The manifestation determination is two simple questions. I'm going to demystify this for y'all. Make it. There's only two questions. So, Raekwon already got ten days. He called the teacher Krusty Snow Bunny. We're trying to give him a love day, and she was Krusty. But listen, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> two questions. Number one. Was Raekwon's behavior in any way related to his disability? Mm. That's question number one. Now, if Raekwon had a speech and language disability, was that in any way related to calling the teacher Snow Bunny? Probably not. No, no. Mm. But let's say the teacher was teasing him about his stuttering. Mm. Are y'all with me? Yep. Miss Snow Bunny was picking on him and cracking jokes about why he can't speak as clearly as the other children. This upset Raekwon. And that's what led to the Snow Bunny yeah. comments. So it's a trigger. Now, you triggered. the behavior was related to his disability because she triggered it. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? But in most cases, a speech and language kid, they're not going to get away with that unless it was triggered. Right. But let me tell you who will always get away with this. Conduct disorder. Mm -hmm. They beat people up for a living. Mm -hmm. So if that child got into a fight, right? Yeah. We want to suspend him for five more days. He already got ten. My son got conduct disorder. The definition of conduct disorder is kicking people's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> this is what conduct disorder is. You kick ass! So... Is his behavior related to the disability of conduct disorder? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So will they be able to suspend him on the 11th day? No. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. What about a kid who keep leaving their seat? Keep leaving their seat too hyper, won't stay on task. He diagnosed with ADHD. He's a special ed for other health impairment related to ADHD. Ain't no daddy at home disorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was him not focusing in the class related to his disability? Hell yeah, he got ADHD, so he's not getting suspended. If your child, what about emotional disturbance? That's every damn thing, <laughs> right? If your child is diagnosed as emotionally disturbed, which I do not recommend and I do not like it, he gonna pass every manifestation. Because what behavior cannot be explained by an emotional disturbance? You know who's gonna get in trouble? Learning disabled, reading disabled, math disabled, they're not really going to be able to explain their disability, their behavior based on their disability. But does everybody understand? First question, was the behavior in question related to the disability? If it was, you cannot suspend him. Did y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Now, if you say it was not, now we go to question number two. What's question number two? Was the IEP appropriate and being implemented as designed? Let me tell you how y'all going to get out of this one. Remember I said every special ed child in America, if they exhibit behavior problems, they're supposed to have a functional behavioral assessment and a positive behavior plan attached to their IEP. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Now let's say your, your daughter is a speech and language child, right? But she gets into a lot of fights. She already got her 10 days used up. We have a manifestation to see if we can suspend her for another day. Was the behavior related to a disability? No. But was the IEP appropriate? If your daughter been getting into fights all year and the IEP team never addressed that, if your daughter been getting into shopping matches with the teacher all year and the IEP team never addressed that, guess what? The IEP was not appropriate. 
Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. If your child has behavior problems and the IEP team never addressed it, the IEP is not appropriate and your child cannot be removed from the school. Y'all better remember that. Y'all better remember that. Now, if your child is in regular ed, they could be suspended 10 days every incident. You see the big difference? Mm -hmm. Regular ed, 10 days per incident. Now, most school districts don't let you suspend a kid for 10 days. They normally give you threes or fives, uh -huh. but the federal government says if they want to, they can give you 10. But if they're in special ed, they can only get 10 for the whole year. This takes me to another point. Some of y'all in here might wanna take your kid out of special ed. You might say, Dr. Umar, my child don't need that. He was putting in for behavior. He is smart as the other kids. I want him back in the regular class. All you gotta do is call an IEP meeting, request a special ed service agreement to sign your child out of special ed, case is closed. Now. If we hate black people charter school or public school, don't agree with your decision to exit your child from special ed, they can take you to due process with Massachusetts State Department of Education. And they can say that Miss Rashida wants Raekwon out of the learning support class and we don't think he can make it in a regular class. They can fight you back. Do most school districts do that? No. If the parents say they want the kid out, they normally exit the kid, but here's what I need y'all to understand. If you exit that badass boy from special ed, and you know he don't know how to act. Mm -hmm. Guess what the snow bunny's gonna do? Mm. They waiting on his ass to mess up one time. Mm -hmm. Are y'all following me? Yep. He ain't got no more special ed. He ain't got no more protections. So the first time he do something, I said. bust his ass to the juvenile detention center. We gonna have the cops come lock him up. Y'all see how this works? Mm -hmm. Or we gonna bring him up on expulsion. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm telling y'all. I don't want our kids in special ed. But if your child do not know how to act, I suggest you leave his ass in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm telling y'all the truth. You better leave him in there until you improve his behavior. Because if he ain't got no damn sense, the minute you exit him from special ed, he's fair game for the snow bunny crew. Mm -hmm. And they want to get his ass. Okay? Mm -hmm. Remember, every public school in America has a white teacher mafia. <laughs> Listen, every school in America, I don't care where you at, charter schools included, they have a white teacher mafia. Who's the white teacher mafia? This is a handful of snow bunnies. Three to five, and they run the whole damn school. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. they, some of them old, some of them young. The old one's been there for 40, they've been there since Dr. King spoke at the graduation. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, old crusty bunnies! <laughs> Should have retired 20 years ago, but they would have maxed out that pension, you feel me? Yeah. They don't even teach no more. They just come to work to max out that pension. And then they recruit a couple young bunnies. Yes. And then they always get one, just one, honorary coon. Yep. Mm. <laughs> to complete the snow bunny circle. Are y'all following me? Uh, There's always a coon. Every school got a coon. And guess what? The coon often looks like the most conscious person in the school. Mm. They got their dashiki on. <laughs> They got their hair locked up, <laughs> smelling like Egyptian musk, <laughs> green smoothies, insects, <laughs> playing Shaka Zulu movies and shit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm telling you now, take it from me. The most conscious person in the school is sometimes the biggest cool. Hey. Mm. I'm telling you, don't let the Halloween costume fool you. Mm. Cause some of y'all, oh yeah, she got my back. She was conscious. That sister was conscious. She was woke, <laughs> woke, <laughs> and sold your son out the minute you turned your back. Mm. Beware of the white teacher mafia. This is why good principals never stay at the school too long. You ever noticed that? You say my son had a good principal. What happened? Sometimes they might have a good white principal, and you say, what happened to the good principal? You know what happened? The snow bunny mafia. Because guess what? I could come to Boston tomorrow. I could take over the worst school in Boston. I could take over the worst school in Norwood. Well, you only got five blacks, but in Boston, I'm going to take over the worst school. Shut up! I'm going to take over the worst school in Boston. Right? 
Dr. Umar is, what's the worst school in Boston? Worst high school in Boston? Dorchester High School. Roxbury. <laughs> Dr. Umar is coming to take over the Bobby Brown Academy. In Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Uh, I'm taking over the Bobby Brown wing of Dorchester. <laughs> <laughs> Soon when I'm walking in, the snow buddies going to have a meet with me. The white teacher mafia going to have a meet. This is how they do it. I said, well, Dr. Johnson, we just want you to know we got everything under control. Mm -hmm. This is how we do lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how we select people for an AP. This is what they do. And I'm sitting there like, ain't out of principle. We have it under control. And guess what? When I start trying to make them teach, mm -hmm. oh, it's over. Mm. They're going to call downtown. He's a bully. He's yeah. racially yeah. insensitive. <laughs> He's arrogant. Yeah. He think he know everything. Because you know the husband worked for the mayor. Her husband is the city managing director. Her husband runs the Irish mob in Boston. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> See? And so guess what? After six months, I'm out of a job. I didn't do nothing wrong except try to make white teachers teach. But the white teachers mafia wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. A lot of time, good principals get a bad rap because they put us in schools and don't let us leave. Mm. You know we got teachers in there who don't want to do no damn work. But because they belong to the union, the teachers union, who fights for their members, who builds their reputation on keeping lazy people employed, I lose my job. Mm. And she don't. Because in most school districts, the principal's union is a whole lot smaller and a whole lot weaker than the teacher's union. Mm. I see how that works. So, behavior plan. When your child goes to a new grade, there needs to be a new behavior plan. I talk to y'all on the phone, I say, do he got a behavior plan? Yeah, they did one in second grade. What grade are you in now? Eighth. Oh. <laughs> he not even the same boy no more. He got tattoos, locks, a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Every time your child changes, I don't care if the behavior plan was done yesterday. Your child just got transferred to a new school or a new class in the same school. Same school, new teacher! New behavior plan. Why, Dr. Umar? Because behavior is a function of where it happens and the consequences that follow. Setting and outcomes dictate behavior. So you can't let them play you by bringing last year's behavior plan to this year's classroom. Uh -uh. Make them do it over. Make them do it over. Now, I'm really upset with our parents, though. You know why? Because y'all not organized to fight for change in these schools. Do y'all know y'all can get anything y'all want if y'all just came together? Why don't y'all ever come together and meet? I help you out, and you ain't got to break the law. You can stay within the law and make the changes that are necessary. Our kids are catching hell in these schools because we're not fighting for this. On Sunday, I'm in Kansas City. Some of y'all might have heard of this. There's a high school in Kansas. It's like Norwood, five blacks, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, two and a half blacks. <laughs> so check this out. Last Monday, a black sister, she's a sophomore, 10th grade, 15, got into an argument with a white boy, 15. White boy called her the N-word. Broke her nose. Yeah, I saw. I saw the video. I saw the. Yeah, I saw the video. Yep. Yeah. She got five days of suspension. Get out of here. The white boy got three. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. So when I get to Kansas City on Sunday, I'm trying to organize a meeting with the students because the students started an organization to deal with the racism in that high school that's been going on for years. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to meet with the students, okay. but I also want to meet with the parents. But if the parents are scared of the white folks. I'm just gonna have to meet with the students because there's a lot that they can do legally and effectively to address that racism, but we got to get organized. Mm. That white boy would have never broke that girl's nose if he didn't know he would get away with it. Right. Mm. Yeah. Remember what Frederick Douglass said, you felt comfortable. those who are whipped the easiest are always whipped the most. Mm -hmm. So in Norwood, we got to look at what do we want for our black students in Norwood. For example, if I was in charge, there would be a director of African-American student success in every school district. 
somebody's job to make sure the black kids succeed. Why we ain't got that? Mm. Why we ain't got that? That's a position y'all should be fighting for. And I would dictate that that person is hired by the parents themselves. Mm. Small things that y'all can do. All the special ed parents, y'all need to be meeting every month. If your child got an IEP, y'all need to be meeting every month. So we can know how often the special ed kids are being suspended. We can know how much time they missing from the regular classroom. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that for a minute. There's a clause in the federal law. I don't want you to forget this. If your child got an IEP, you better write it down. It's called least restrictive environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Least Let me tell you what this means. Yeah. Least restrictive environment. What this means is special education is actually a form of segregation. Are y'all following me? Mm. We're not segregating them based on race. We're segregating them based on perceived disability. Mm -hmm. Why did I say perceived disability? Because they may not really Because they might not really have one. Mm -hmm. This is just the perception. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yep. So, Raekwon has a math disability, right? If Raekwon has a math disability, Raekwon should only be in special ed for what class? Math. math. And if Shaquita got a reading disability. She should only be in special ed for what class? Reading. So why is Raekwon in special ed for math, for reading, for art, for recess, for bathroom, for gym? Are y'all following me? Your child reports to a segregated class at the top of the morning, and your son leaves school in a segregated class at the end of the day. That is a violation of federal law. Least restrictive environment says your child should only be in special ed to the extent necessary in order to learn. Mm -hmm. For example, your son got a reading disability. I say, how much time do you think he need to be in the special ed receiving reading help? You say, my son only needs 60 minutes a day. That's it? My son only needs 60 minutes a day. So we're going to call the IEP team meeting and tell them he only needs 60 minutes a day. That's it. You know why they give him, put him in there all day? It's easier for the teacher's schedule. Because they block schedule everything. So it's easier to just put your kid in there all day. They're not thinking about your child. No. So everything they told you at the IEP meeting, how he's going to get all this special help and special support, you think they remembered any of that crap when he showed up for the first day of special ed? They threw his ass in the class all day. So I need y'all to know, if your child is in special ed longer than what you think they need, you better call an IEP meeting because that's a violation of LRE. They are overly segregating your child. That is against the law. Y'all better be fighting for your babies. Don't put them in special ed if you ain't going to fight them. Now let me give you the other clause, and then I'm going to wrap it up so we can do some questions. Mm -hmm. The other clause is FAPE, Free and Appropriate Public Education. FAPE, Free and Appropriate Public Education. We know what free means, right? Mm -hmm. If your disabled child needs something in order to learn, they do not pay for it. It's free. Your child is deaf, they need a certain type of a hearing device. The IEP team got to pay for it. Your child got a problem holding his pencil, buttoning his buttons, tying his shoes. He has an occupational therapy impairment. Mm -hmm. He's going to get OT. Mm -hmm. You don't pay for it. Your child is stuttering when he talks. He's going to get speech therapy. You don't pay for it. And do you know why you don't pay for it? Because the minute you signed them up for special ed, their name went into a computer. That name got transferred to the Massachusetts State Department of Education. And by the end of the month, your son's school got a welfare check with his name on it. Are y'all following me? Mm. So the reason you don't pay for no services is because special ed is a subsidized program. Are y'all feeling me now? Mm -hmm. Now, we know what free means. But guess what? Sometimes they'll hustle y'all out of the faith. Let me give you an example. Your son got a little bit of a comprehension problem. He got an IEP. Principal pull you to the side of principal and say, hey, guess what? The University of Massachusetts has a reading program that they're going to carry out at our school after school, mm -hmm. but it's going to cost $75 a week. We think you should sign your son up for that school because it can really get him to where he needs to be. Hmm. But guess who's supposed to pay for it? Hmm. The school. They told you to pay for it. And you hmm. know what you're supposed to say? Thank you for letting me know my son needs that program in order for his IEP to be appropriate. Y'all gonna pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> see how that work? You see how that work? Same thing when they say your son can't sit still. We need you to come sit with your son. Your son got an IEP, you're not sitting with nobody. Mm -hmm. If my son needs a one-on-one aid, you're gonna write that into the IEP as a related service. And you're gonna find somebody and pay somebody out of my son's special ed subsidy to sit with him. 
You don't go sit with no special ed kid all day. And guess what? You write a letter and say, y'all called me up there to sit with my son 10 times. That's proof he needs a one-to-one aid. I need to know when the one-to-one aid is going to start. And if he gets into some major trouble before he gets a one-to-one aid, you know what's going to happen at that manifestation determination. No, no. You let them know that. Don't let them play you. You play them right on back. They got extra money. Make them use it for your child. Right. Mm-hmm. We never make them use the special ed money for the special ed kids. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about appropriate, the letter A. Free and appropriate public education. What is appropriate? Let me tell you what the courts say about appropriate. You ready for what the, what the uh, federal court said? Federal court deprin- defines appropriate IEP for special ed as a learning program that is designed to derive a minimum benefit. Did y'all hear what I just said? Bottom line, they don't have to give your child the best program. They just have to show that their program provides some benefit. Hmm. Y'all see how that works? In other words, you can't come in there with a $50,000 reading program and say, if y'all spend this $50,000, my son can read in a week. It don't work like that. Nope. They don't have to give them the $50,000 reading program. They just got to show that the IEP program they got for your son does derive some benefit. <laughs> it's a very low standard, but it's still a standard. And you're supposed to fight for your child whenever you think the uh, education is not appropriate. Let me give you not appropriate. Your son been in special ed since the second grade. Shame on you for putting a second grader in special ed in the first place, black parent, okay? But he's been in special ed since the second grade. He in eighth grade, still can't read. He's not intellectually disabled. Does that sound appropriate to you? Hell no. Your child is in a special ed class all day long. He's smarter than every kid in the class, including the teacher. Does that sound appropriate to you? <laughs> you see how this works? Hell no. Your child been getting speech and language therapy since they was five years old. Child 15 still got the same study they had when they was five. Does that sound like appropriate to you? Hell no. Whenever you don't think your child is learning what they should be learning, it's automatically a violation of F-A-P-E. Faith. Every time you write a letter to the school, you better put faith in there. Now, for my regular ad parents, if you feel the school is discriminating against your child, he's always getting in trouble, he never gets to uh, sign up for the electives that he want or she, remember this, United States Department of Education, Office of Civil Rights. United States Department of Education, my Norwood parents, because there's only five of them. <laughs> United States Department of Education, Office of Civil Rights, you can file a complaint with the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Civil Rights, racial discrimination and publicly funded programs. They will come to Norwood, they will come to Boston, they will investigate your accusation, and they will decide whether or not what you claim to have been racism, whether it was racist or not. I need y'all to know that. You can always file federal complaint for investigation, okay? Now, if your child is in special ed, and they're not getting what they want. You take the school district to due process with the state of Massachusetts. And that's when you file a formal special ed grievance with your child's school district. Say, my child been in special ed 10 years, still can't read. I think it's time for them to pay for a private school. They're going to send a hearing officer to Norwood. What is a hearing officer? A hearing officer is not a judge. It's normally a retired principal, retired teacher, retired psychologist, retired superintendent who has been trained like a judge to adjudicate special ed cases. And so you're coming to a school room like this, let's say I'm the hearing officer, right? I'm sitting up here, the school is over there with the principal, with their lawyer, the mom and dad in the community advocate is over here, and mom and dad is gonna tell me why they think we hate black kids, public school needs to pay for a private school, and the school district is gonna push back, and then I'm gonna say, I will give y'all my decision in two weeks, and then I mail y'all the decision. Most of the time, if you stick to your guns, you'll get what you want. Most of the time, if you stick to your guns, you will get what you want. What happens if you don't get what you want? Let's say the hearing officer rules against you. You wanted a private school. They say no. You think they was in cahoots with the school. Now you got to get a royal lawyer because it's time to go to regular court. Mm. Up until due process, you can handle it yourself. Up in, I mean, you can even handle it yourself in regular court too. But at that point, I recommend you get a lawyer. Now, people always ask me, Dr. Umar, should I get a lawyer or should I take care of this on my own before it gets to court? We're talking about the process, right? I recommend you do it yourself in the initial stages. You know why? Because I've seen lawyers sell parents out. Hmm. I've seen special ed attorneys sell parents out where I'm like, you should have just fought this case yourself. You would have did better at the hearing with the hearing officer by yourself 
they let that person do what they did because they didn't fight for your child at all. Mm -hmm. Remember, lawyers got a whole bunch of cases, and they're always looking for the cases that they're not going to put no work into so they can close them out real quick. Mm -hmm. And you also got to keep in mind, lawyers don't like to sue school districts. Why? Because school districts are the largest employers in many states. Boston Public Schools probably employs more people than the state of Massachusetts as a governor. So lawyers don't like to go to war with school districts because one day they might can make some money with the school district. Mm -hmm. See how that go. So when you're talking to these lawyers, if you don't feel in your heart that they're going to fight for your child, I would not get them. I would pass and I would get my own. And if any of you thinking about going back to school for something, consider educational law. I'm telling you, go to law school and become an educational attorney. We don't have a single major black educational attorney in this country. You know where I'm wow. going to be January the 31st? We're going to be down in, in, in Florida. Some of y'all saw me do a live with a black boy named Brendan Depper. Did y'all see me talk about Brendan Depper? Yes. 17 year old black boy who beat the white teacher's aid up. I wish that didn't happen. I'm sorry she got beat up, but guess what? He's as much a victim as the teacher's aid was. He should have never been in that school. He was taking five medications. He was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder at six foot five, 270 pound black boy with no one-to-one -one aid, no behavior plan, no FBA, when he should have been in the damn private school. So we going down there, we're going to have a peaceful protest outside the courthouse because he's getting sentenced on January the 31st at 1.30. Wow. If any of y'all interested in coming to stand with us, just text me for the information because I'm going to that. Okay? What part I have of Florida? A, uh, Palm yeah, Coast. Oh. Boonell, excuse me. The courthouse is in Boonell. B-U-N-N-E-L-L. Boonell, Florida, Wednesday, January 31st at 1.30. Brendan Depper is his name. Now, his white foster mother, adoptive mother, called me the other day. I'm trying to decide if I want to call her back or not because I really feel that the adoptive white parents sold him out too mm. because they homeschooled him for like 12 years. Mm. Why are you homeschooling a boy with these kind of problems? What, you just locking his ass up? Like, what is this? Mm. So I don't believe they really fought for the boy themselves either. And she also told me that she reached out to a super attorney, Benjamin Crump, who's based in Tallahassee, Florida, and he turned her down. Mm. Yep, he said he's not going to. He, he, he then she reached out to the NAACP. And they turned it down too. You know why? Because you have a privileged white woman who was attacked by this black boy. And they don't give a damn if he was mentally unbalanced. They don't give a damn if the IEP wasn't right. They don't give a damn if he was being overly medicated. All they saw was a black man, boy, attack a white woman and they want him to crucify. And guess what? The judge can give him 30 years on January 31st. 30 years? He can get 30 years. 17? for felony assault on a school staff member, 17 years old at the time. It happened on Malcolm X's execution day, February the 21st, February the 21st. And he could get uh, 30 years in jail. Now check this out. How many of y'all remember the case also in Florida of uh, what's the sister who got shot by the white woman through the door? Remember the, uh, she took the, she took her son's uh, skates, I think it was. Yeah. So she went and knocked oh, yes. on the door. Mm -hmm. and she the white woman yeah. shot her through the door and killed her. Guess what? Guess how many years the white woman can get? 30. So can somebody explain to me how a boy who attacked a teacher without a weapon, teacher still living, she's raised over $100,000 on GoFundMe. <laughs> Y'all see how this works? Y'all see how this works? The woman, the white woman who shot A.J. Owens, rest in peace. The sister's name was A.J. Owens, the mother who got shot and murdered by the white woman. The white woman could get 30 years. How can Brendan also get 30 years? Mm -hmm. So you're telling me murder with a weapon is equivalent mm -hmm. to assault with no weapon by a child in public school who wasn't getting the services he needed. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going down there to protest. Mm -hmm. So we got Kansas coming up with the protest for the sister who got her nose broke by the white boy. And we're going to protest for Brendan who could go to, go to jail for 30 years when that boy never got what he should have got. If he was white with all the problems he got. Mm -hmm. He would have, oh, by the way, two white kids in the same school beat they teachers up. Didn't spend one day in jail. Nope. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yep. I'm going to talk about all this when we do our protest on January the 31st. So what I'm saying, Norwood, is y'all got to get organized as I close this. And I'm here to help you. I got two organizations. National Independent Black Parent Association, N-I-B-P-A, National Independent Black Parent Association. If you parents are serious, Regular ed parents and special ed parents, if you're serious about organizing, I will help you. Seven committees. Seven committees. Y'all decide who's going to take over what committee. Special ed, 
We're going to investigate. Do these kids really belong in special ed? What are they doing with the special ed money? Are they being put in special ed too long? Hmm. Are y'all feeling me? Hmm. Are they achieving in special ed? School discipline committee. What schools in Norwood are suspending our kids the most? What schools in Boston are suspending our children the most? We need to know this. What schools in Plymouth suspending our kids too much? Homeschool. For those of y'all who want to homeschool, let's organize all the homeschooling parents into a homeschooling committee. School policy. What are the rules in Norwood schools or Boston schools or Brockton schools that y'all think are racially discriminating against our kids? And let's fight to change those rules. School finance. When the last time a black person got a contract to get some business money from Norwood Public Schools? Okay. When the last time a black person got a contract from Boston Public? How much is the contract to clean the bathrooms at night after everybody leave? You don't even need a GED to do that. Has a black person ever had it? Who got the contract to uh, get rid of all the broken furniture? Who got the contract to put in all the audio visual cameras? You see that? Everything in the school is done on the contract. Are black people getting out shit? I ain't talking about city money. I'm talking school district money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we need a finance committee to see where the money is really going. Mm -hmm. See, once upon a time, you couldn't have a contract with a school district unless you lived in the district zone. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, you couldn't teach in the school district if you didn't live in the district zone until the white teachers union fought for that provision to be dropped. And now you got white folks who don't live nowhere near you getting all the contract money off your tax dollars for your child's school services. It's time we unite and organize. Mm. So that's NIBPA, y'all. If you're serious, I'll come back. I'll work with y'all. I'll organize. But you got to be serious. Because the problem with us, we are not committed to ourselves. Mm. We're not. We're committed to everything but black folks. You will stand in a Beyonce line for eight <laughs> hours and freeze your ass off to sit in that damn concert. Tell me I'm wrong. And I didn't even know the concert tickets went up. Somebody told me it cost $400 for a concert. That's nosebleed seats. Nosebleed seats, too. That's nosebleeds. <laughs> At least. At least five. At least five hundred or five thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand. If you want to see the sweat falling down, five thousand. I'm not paying no five thousand. That's two months of child support. That's my damn child support twice. Listen. 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 It better come with some ribs and some deviled eggs and some mac and cheese and some greasy turkey butts and some sweet potato pie. You name it. Five thousand dollars for no damn concert. As I close, take your phone out. I'm gonna give you my number so you can reach me. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay, it's 8 o'clock, and we got to be out at 8.45. So once I give you my number, I'm going to take five questions. If anybody interested in getting a copy of my, my book, Black Parent Advocate, they were, they were on the table. We're probably going to need somebody there to handle them. Keisha going to take care of it. Let me give you my number. 215. Did we boil the water? <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't ask for no damn tea. Wait. I'm thinking what you know what Drake is saying. This one is good. Sealed. It's sealed up. Sealed up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let her. Your saliva is safer. Your saliva is safer. <laughs> I'll trust him. Brother Chris. Bless it, bless it, bless it. If you suspected, reject it. If you suspected, reject it. Shut up! Let me get a number. 
215-989-9858. Twice more, 215-989-9858. Once more, 215-989-9858. That's my personal cell. If you need a consult for your child, you can text me. I charge $75 for telephone, $100 for virtual. If you want to look at my pretty face for an hour. Okay, listen. I need to see the psychological evaluation. So it's going to be hard for me to help you without the paperwork. You might say, Dr. Umar, I don't have the paperwork. Well, guess what? All you got to do is write a letter to the school. The law is called FERPA. FERPA 1974, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. It gives you the right to a complete copy of your child's educational record. All you have to do is say, Dear Dr. Silverberger, my son, Raekwon, is a fifth grader at your school. I'm requesting a complete copy of his academic record to include all special education documentation, evaluations, report card grades, midterm examinations, standardized testing, classroom documentation, nurse files, and I have a copy of it in my book too. All you got to do is copy the letter and you send it into the school. They got 45 days to give you a complete copy of your child's record. Mm. So if you don't have the records, all you got to do is send that letter in. Y'all feel me? Yep. So get the records because I can. we can do the console without no paperwork. Like if you ain't got nothing and the situation is urgent, we can do the console without paperwork. But in my experience, y'all tend not to know a damn thing about your child's case. So I need to see the paperwork so I can make sure I'm giving you the effective counsel. But we need to start a chapter of the NIBPA. We need NIBPA Brockton. We need NIBPA Norwood. We need NIBPA uh, Boston. We need NIBPA Springfield. We need a chapter of the Black Parent Association everywhere. And for my brothers, Mothers too, National Movement to Save Black Boys. The National Movement to Save Black Boys is specific about black boy issues, but the NIBPA is about education. Y'all feel me? Mm -hmm. Education, boys and girls, National Movement to Save Black Boys, only boys, and we deal with everything from criminal justice to homelessness to racism to everything. Okay, so if you're interested, let me know. You want to start a meeting to get organized? You let me know. I love to preach. I love to teach. I love to travel. But organizing is better. We getting older. Everybody in here getting older. First time I came to Boston, I was in my mid-30s. Now I'm in my mid-40s. I'm getting old. I'm still cute as shit. But I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay? But we getting older, right, See, Our new seat for over a decade. We getting older. So let us get something done so we can leave this world a lot better than the way we found it. Black power. Black power. Folks who's going to ask the questions, we'll take five. No speeches. No speeches. A question. If you get into the speech, <laughs> I don't want to fight you, shoot you, stab you, none of that. I just want to shut you down and say, ask a question so everybody can get the most out of his answer. A, don't forget your number. Here we Hold go. Hold on. One, two, three, four. Did, did you balance it out? Right here. Right, right. I got it. 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 <laughs> this is who I pointed to. We're going to go with those five. Everybody know their number? We're going to try if they just ask a question. We can come over to y'all two, all right? I'm Let's try. Last. Okay. Who's the number one? Right here. Right here. Me right here? Okay. Well, I actually just wanted to ask about, like, the aftermath of, like, middle and high school with special education students. Like, what about when they reach to college? Does that continue? And how do we, if you still fight for them while they're in college? There is no special ed in college, but what college does have is disability accommodations. So let me give you an example. You have a 12th grader, right? Hypothetically, your daughter is going to graduate in June or May. She's going to University of Massachusetts, hypothetically. She's going to need a tutor. She's going to need extra time to take her tests. Okay, she might need longer time to complete her class projects. If her IEP was completed within the past calendar year, she can simply take the IEP from Boston Public to the Disability Accommodations Office at University of Massachusetts, and they will implement the accommodations that are already on the current IEP. If the IEP is not current, then the Disability Office will arrange for her to get retested. Some schools have their own psychologist that does the testing. When I was working on my doctorate, we had to do the testing for the medical students at the university that I attended. You follow me? Or they might refer you to a psychologist off campus who you pay to do the disability evaluation. You follow what I'm saying? But if the IEP is current, she just takes it there. If it's not, she'll get retested. Let's say the child was never special ed. It doesn't matter if you were special ed or not. If you need disability accommodations in college, that has nothing to do with whether you were an IEP kid in grade school. You feel me? Anybody can get it. And let me tell you all a secret. I learned this when I was doing disability testing, working on my doctorate. All the white folks 
get disability accommodations. Nothing be wrong with them. Y'all feel me? So guess what? Y'all need to do the same thing. Some of y'all non-traditional students going back to college to be a teacher, a nurse, get them damn disability accommodations so you can take longer time to get your tests done and longer time to get your assignments done. Black folks don't take advantage of it because we're honest people. It's time to get dishonest. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, all the medical students came to our office to get accommodations. Nothing was wrong with them, and they gave them to a mini them. White privilege. Get yours. If I go back to school, if I ever go back to school, I'm going to go in there and disabled. I'm going to pull my pants all the way up. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I have a question about the uh, brother Brandon Deffa. Yes, sir. So what's the minimum he's going to get? Because it's up to the judge. The judge could give him. First of all, he was originally tried as a juvenile. Yeah, I remember the case. They upgraded it to adult once the video circulated around the news. Mm. The snow bunnies went crazy, oh, and the Lord. judge upgraded it, right? Yeah. So the judge could give him as little as probation, as much as 30 years. Wow. Mm. And that's why we're going to be out there. Yeah, because I remember you saying the judge, not the lawyer, didn't do anything. He pleaded. The lawyer yeah. made him plead guilty. Yeah. Wow. The lawyer made the 17 year old boy no. plead guilty. Why would you make this boy plead guilty when you know he didn't get any of the services that he should have? He should have never even been at the school. He was a victim, man. Even, even, his, even his foster mother talked about how when he was a kid growing up, yeah. the white kids used to pick on him. I think they called him the N-word. They would rub the tennis ball on their testicles and throw it at him. Oh. Like he was racially abused. And I believe when he attacked her, I'm not making no excuses, yeah. but he was a victim. When he attacked that white woman, I believe that triggered his post-traumatic stress from all those racial bullying incidents he had to deal with his whole life. The lawyer didn't do him justice, bro. And you know what's sad? The reason why we coming, he's had no black people in his life. His adoptive parents are white. The judge is white. The school is white. And he's dark. He's a deeply yeah. melanated brother. Nappy head, traditional, stereotypical black boy. He never had no black people show him no love. So we going to be there. Hold on, brother. I just want to. Hold on. I know you do. A lot of people in this room want to do the same. Since it's your turn. Thank you for holding your peace. Appreciate you not cussing me out. Thank you. 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 Thank with my daughter having an IEP, my fear is... What grade? I'm sorry, eighth. Okay. She's in the eighth grade. My fear is that she will fall through the cracks because they will let her get over or get off easy and she won't get what she needs because I've seen it. Okay, if you I'm give her the IEP. Right. Well, I, I, I had her evaluated because after the pandemic, I noticed a shift in the atmosphere and she was dealing with some things, so I requested and okay. you know, I saw it myself first. Okay. So, so she has an IP presently. She does. So my fear is with her having this, they're gonna she's gonna fall through the cracks because they're gonna take it easy on like I want her to But you're gonna stay on there. You gotta crack the whip on the IEP team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna yeah. keep her in special ed, you gotta crack yeah. the whip on the IEP team. And another thing, the IEP team legally, the IEP team only has to meet once a year, right? Yeah. Once a year. Yeah. But guess what? If you a serious black parent of a special ed child, you meet with the IEP team every marking period. Every marking period, you got to do a check-in with them and make sure your child is learning. Because I'm going to tell y'all right now, nobody's following the IEP. Did y'all hear what I just said? Nobody's following the IEP. So if you're not cracking the whip, she will fall through the cracks. But I'm going to give you my bigger concern for your princess. In, in Massachusetts, do the children have to pass that 12th grade state assessment to get a diploma. Yes. Do that? Yes. My fear for your daughter, because special ed is dumbed down ed, will she pass that test when she get to the 12th grade after receiving those lackadaisical instructional services? Mm. Which means, if you're going to give it an IEP, remember I talked about least restrictive environment? You should limit her time to no more than 60 minutes, unless you think she need more because you want her to get all her regular classes in the regular class. Yeah. You don't want her missing science to get some damn reading help for special ed. You don't want her missing language yeah. to get some read. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You want the major classes in the regular class and whatever help she get for special ed, she can get that during art. She can get that during gym. She can yeah. get that during lunch. Never let them deny your child the major classes in the regular class for special ed. That's a big mistake we make. We let them take them out of a serious class to go with the special ed teacher. Hell no. 
my child is keeping her majors in the regular class, y'all gonna pull her out doing one of her specials. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So crack the whip, but ninth grade, have a serious conversation with your daughter. Tell her, say, listen, you got an IEP. If I take this off, can you handle it? Mm. If I keep this on, I'm afraid you won't get a diploma. Mm. Be real with y'all children, because when I evaluate our children, I tell them the truth. When they come into my office, I say, do you know why you're here? No. Raekwon, let me explain something to you. <laughs> your mother told them white folks, you got a learning disability. What you mean? You're slow, ninja. Are you slow? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all. You see the cheese bus out there? The special kids, do you want to be on it? Mm. I'm not riding that bus. Well, guess what? There's only one person going to make that decision. I'm about to test you, boy. I'm going to give you an IQ test. I'm going to give you a reading test, a math test, a writing test, a comprehension test, an emotional test, a psychological test, adaptive behavior test, and based on your scores, you decide, not me, whether you come to school on that bus next week. It's up to you. And so guess what? Raheem got something to score high for now, don't he? Yep. So guess what? He knocked the test out, scores his average or above. I take the report to the principal and the parent. They looking at me like I fabricated the boy test score. Dr. Johnson, how do you explain this? Because the teacher said he's performing below basic. I said, let me tell you what the difference is. In your classroom, he does what he wants. Mm. In my office, he does what he can. Mm. See the difference? So y'all got to bring out that black excellence in y'all children. Yeah. And stop letting them hustle yeah. and play. Yeah. 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 Be mentally stimulated. So that means he's, what, what, what's the diet, what's the uh, disability? Is he emotional disturbance or is he other health impairment for ADHD, conduct disorder, or ODD? Maybe ADHD, but he hasn't been diagnosed. I'm against that. Any kind of medication. But okay. he, he's, at, he's average, like academically. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think he should have no IEP. I'm going to tell yeah, you why. he shouldn't have it. But because I bet you he can learn in the regular class. He stays in the regular class. They don't remove him. He's so the regular class is where he gets the service. He gets all the service. So why he got an class. IEP at all? I know. So I'm like, if they feel like he needs it, then why does he have like a one-on-one -on -one aid? Like, Do you feel he needs a one-on-one -on -one aid? Is he a behavioral challenge? No, he's not. So how did he get an IEP for emotional disturbance? Because it's probably what's on his, on his file. Yeah, it is because... What happened to get him? I that? think, like, somebody messed with him, and then he, like, punched the kid. What? That's like, not enough for that. That's just a fight. But, you know, families, like, you know, he should have it. You get extra... You know, nah, they nah, 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 my, nah, nah, People nah. around my circle, they, they encourage the IEP because you get other resources. Like what? Like more time to be tested. More time in jail. What else you get? <laughs> 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 you know, Shut up! <laughs> 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 you know, we get more time. You know, we get more time. It's not a good thing. I know. I what we're bringing in? So now, what should I do? Here's my question to you. Remember I said earlier? I need you to be honest with yourself on this one. Is he a behavior problem? Remember what I said? They get 10 days in special ed. We get rid of the IEP, they can hit him with 10 days of suspension every time he cut up. Can he handle it? Then call the IEP meeting and exit him. Tell him my son should have never had this. I'm terminating services right now. Sign it. Make sure you sign it. If you don't sign, they can still bill for money. Sign, it's over. Just that something. Thank you, brother. Brother Lamar. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Danny. Um, you spoke about the Geneva Convention and um, charging the United States of America with war crimes against yes, us. Um, I just wanted you to expound more on that. How can we get there? What are the necessary steps to get there? What do we expect from them charging the United States of America? What should we get? And what, what should it look like? And how can we get that to come to fruition? Because that question. is very important. Good question. <clears throat> Honorable Marcus Garvey was on that path. Mm -hmm. El-Hajj Malik El-Shabazz Malcolm X was on that path. Here's the problem with charging the United States with human rights abuse against American African people. We identify as Americans. Mm -hmm. Because we identify as Americans, it automatically takes us out of the jurisdiction of world court. You see that? The world court is for nations and populations who don't operate under a jurisdiction to which they claim loyalty. You see that? We claim loyalty and citizenship with the United States of America. Because of that, we are not under the jurisdiction of the world court. We would have to disidentify from our so-called American citizenship, declare ourselves a separate people, whatever that may be, victims of America, displaced Africans, whatever name we want to come up with. The people, the village of Raekwon, whatever y'all want to call it. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, you in the corner. Shut up. <laughs> But my point is, let's identify, come back with our own name, whatever we want to be called, and then we take the charges. But I'm going to be honest with you, brother. The biggest barrier is psychological. Mm -hmm. Black people are still in pursuit of acceptance by uh -huh. Caucasians. Mm -hmm. We are the most psychologically homeless people in America, do you understand? We will cling to that red, white, and blue flag like it's the last thing Talk on earth it. because deep down inside we know we are not and never will be accepted as mm -hmm. you see that. But the minute we wake up and finally admit we are not Americans and we're not losing nothing by renouncing it, now we can go to the world. Mm. Let's identify on a like larger scale so everyone is understood that we're doing. We simply come together, yeah. declare ourselves an independent people, okay. and lodge our petition. Mm. So just but as long as as long as we're claiming American citizenship, okay. we have no pathway to justice on the international level. Mm. The, our only path to justice is American courts. You see that? Because we are American. So we are subject to their court structure. Mm -hmm. The minute we disidentify from that, now we can appeal to the world court. Could mm. they kick us out for disidentifying? They've been trying to kick us out. Yes. Well, <laughs> that's a good point. Possibly. That's a good point. It's possible. But let me tell you why they couldn't, though. Let me answer your question. No. Because when you go they on the it. UN website, where they talk about the rights mm -hmm. of displaced populations, mm -hmm. victims of genocide, so forth and so on, oh, yeah. one of the conditions you cannot be forcibly removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, no, they couldn't. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. if you look at that, mm -hmm. we get more. We get more by disidentifying from America mm -hmm. than identifying with it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you say that again? So mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, got it. I got you. <laughs> we get more disidentifying from America mm -hmm. and recognizing ourselves as an independent, sovereign people on the soil mm -hmm. than we would ever get as claiming American citizenship. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And that's, that's one of the reasons why they always want us to come out and vote. They got to always whip us up into this American thing. Mm -hmm. Because if black people ever came to their senses and recognized, mm -hmm. we would do better off disidentifying from America, mm -hmm. giving up your passport, giving up your driver's license, and living as a freeborn people. Mm -hmm. We have more rights. Mm -hmm. We have more rights as ethnic nationals living here than we ever would as American citizens. Mm -hmm. It's something we need to seriously think about as a Absolutely. people. And you don't have to be a Moor to do it. Shout out to the Moorish brothers. Right. But they preach it as if you got to be a Moor. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Any independent nation, any group of asylum seekers, mm -hmm. any victims of genocide. Because when you look at the Geneva Convention, mm -hmm. every definition of genocide, yeah. America is guilty of it mm -hmm. with us. Every single one. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I believe we would do better off disidentifying and fighting as an independent people. Mm -hmm. Facts. Let's clap it up for Doc. Woo! Woo! Go buy a book and he can sign it and talk to you right over here. Well, what we're do. Listen up real quick, real quick, real quick. If you want to get a book, just so you know, how much? If you're paying digitally, that fifty dollars a piece, five hundred pages. If you're paying digitally, Apple Pay, Zelle, and Venmo, you use my cell number, which you all have. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Apple Pay, Venmo, Zelle, you use two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Okay? PayPal. It's paypal.me slash Umar the Psychologist. If you want to use a credit card, I left my iPad I'm, in the hotel I'm room. looking for it, yeah. If y'all got to do credit card, I can do it on my cell phone. Just let Sister Keisha know that when you get over there. And of course, you can use cash if it's not counterfeit. And I will, <laughs> and I will take food stamps. <laughs> if you got Barack Obama face on it. Hey. I'm picking with y'all. <laughs> okay. So, if you get a book, what we're going to do, brother, see, anybody get a book, that's one line by itself, the book line. Okay, and the book right. line is going to be the fastest line, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else, we're going to come and do the line here. In fact, you know what? Bring this couch to you, brother. You good, Keisha? Maybe we can do the male-female line. I want to do, we got more men or women in here. So the women line will be like to the wall. Mix. No, women line will be to the wall, and the men line will be over by them chairs. So my sisters, y'all can come right here. Have your camera out so we can snap the photo. Make sure y'all send me the uh, picture tonight before you go to bed, especially if you five-five picking the thighs. <laughs>